I got laid off. Elon got me. His takeover at Twitter, it was quick, it was efficient, it was a little bit ruthless. Everyone I know at Twitter is gone. The number of designers left there, probably within the single digits. And Twitter isn't the only one. Google, Amazon, Meta, Salesforce, it seems like everyone's reducing their workforce. If I hear macroeconomic trends one more time, I might go crazy. And you may be in the thick of it. Maybe your company is talking about layoffs or you've just gone through your own round of layoffs. Maybe you've been laid off or have survived your layoffs. Or maybe you've just been reading about it in the news and you're a little bit worried or anxious about the future. Wherever you may be, these tech layoffs have probably been on your mind. So how do we make sense of it all? What can we take away from what these companies are doing and why? What does that mean for us? And how could we use what we learn to navigate the rest of our careers? I have five key takeaways from my own experience of being laid off. Hopefully they help you walk out of this really difficult season with more resilience and confidence moving into the future. Takeaway number one, your position is not permanent. These companies will fire you as thousands, including myself, know from personal experience, these companies will not hesitate to let you go, lay you off, politely move away from their relationship with you. And that's a hard truth to swallow. It's scary to think that your company will let you go at any time. But don't forget, the opposite is also true. In the same way, these companies will not hesitate to move on to protect themselves, their business, their money. Maybe we shouldn't hesitate to move on from them when we feel like we've reached our max level of growth and contribution to the company. The company may not be there forever and you don't have to be there forever. Let that give you permission to look outside of the company that you're working for right now. Maybe there's an industry that you're more passionate about. Maybe there's a company that you feel like you can grow more in. Maybe there's a director or a manager that you really wanna work under and learn from. Let this knowledge empower you. You're not just a helpless spectator waiting for these companies to lay you off. You are an active participant in the future of your career. You can actively take steps in shaping and forming your career. That's the joy of career growth. Use this takeaway to give yourself permission to dream a different future for yourself. Takeaway number two, take the big bet. In 2020, these companies went on a massive hiring spree. This graph shows the number of people some of these tech companies have employed these past several years, comparing that with the number of people they've laid off in the past several years. They've laid off a lot of employees, but comparing that to the amount of people who they've hired, that's still a huge net positive. The point here is they're taking big bets on their growth as a company. They're still looking towards the future and wanting to boost their team numbers so that they can capitalize on the opportunities ahead. Yes, they have cut many, many jobs and that's hurt so many people, but companies take big bets on themselves in the hopes that they can cash in on the future. But what about us? What big bets are we taking on ourselves and our future? When's the last time you've spent big money on yourself, on your personal career development, on your own mental health, on your physical fitness? Maybe it's been that business degree that you've been thinking about or that public speaking workshop that you've been eyeing. And it's not just money that we're investing, it's time, it's energy, it's spending time with your family and loved ones. It's ensuring that we have longevity in our work in our career and in our mental health. So in the same way these companies have been taking big bets on themselves, let's not be afraid to take big bets on our futures. Principle number three, play the long game. Companies look down the road and they are anticipating difficult times ahead. And while it's awkward to fire thousands of employees all at once, they do it because they're playing the long game. They know that they need to take steps now to protect their future. They need to protect their investors, their money, their business. Even though in the short term, it's really painful, tons of bad press, low team morale, they do it anyways because they know that they'll benefit 
in the long term. We should be doing that too. We should be playing the long game. We should be doing things today that we know will benefit us in the future. We should be keeping our resumes updated. We should be building our portfolios every day. We should be investing in those long-term relationships, whether they be your coworkers, that recruiter LinkedIn, your manager. We should be following up every single day because in the future, it will become relevant. All that work and time you've invested in the short term will be waiting for you in the long term when you need it. If there's another round of layoffs, if there's a career switch, if there's another tank in the economy, it'll be waiting there for you because you've played the long game. Principle number four, embrace change. You see it all the time. CEOs being interviewed on the news or standing up in front of their employees at their company all hands and they're just so optimistic about their future. My own experience at Twitter, our CEO was very optimistic. Even in the midst of an Elon takeover, he had a sense of optimism that didn't pan out this time, but that is a characteristic of CEOs, always being able to look at the future and seeing greener pastures ahead. They can see the economy tanking. They can just go through a round of layoffs and they can still get up the next day, put on a positive face and lead with courage. And yes, a barrage of optimism, especially when you're in a negative place can get really tiring, but there's something that we can learn there. It's the fact that CEOs look at change, not necessarily as a bad thing. They see the opportunity that change can bring and they're quick to grab hold of it. So whether you've been laid off or are going through some sort of change in your life, just pause for a second and consider the idea that change isn't necessarily bad. And yes, change can be really painful and oftentimes really scary. But if we learn to embrace change and not be so intimidated by it, maybe we can see all the opportunity that change provides. Of course, we know that change is a constant. It's not just in your career, but also in your personal life, in your family, in your relationships, in your friendships, in your own health, there will always be change and that's the beauty of life. We can embrace change and use it as a catalyst to turn the page, to chase that dream, to go into that new season. So let's think like CEOs and be optimistic about change, understanding that change might bring us to the next breakthrough. Takeaway number five, let go of security. This year of layoffs have shown us that job security really isn't a thing. Even if you have the best manager and your relationship with them is strong and healthy, sometimes they cannot protect you at what the company is deciding to do. But maybe expecting companies to give us a sense of security in our life isn't really fair for them to do. They can't deliver on it. Maybe it's a facade that we have to let go of. Letting go of that facade can help us to focus on something different, on something better. Rather than focusing on security, Let's focus on strength, strength to withstand anything that comes our way in any economy, in any situation, your confidence in your strength to stand when things are shaky, that propels you forward more than security ever could. And we need strength when our coworkers, our friends, our families need someone to lean on. We need strength when the economy is rocking and our jobs are hanging from a thread. Our strength is how we land on our feet when our job security falls through. And practically, strength means excellence in our craft, excellence in the ability to do the job that we've set out to do, whether you're a designer, a developer, a marketer, or in people ops, strength is the ability to give value to the people that you are working with. So get better at it. Be intentional about growing your skills and improving a little bit every single day. And I guarantee you, my coworkers at Twitter who got laid off, they will land on their feet because they're amazing at what they do. If you're good at what you do, if you lose your job, you will find another. So there it is, five of my takeaways that will hopefully help you navigate wherever you are in your journey. Hopefully they empower you and give you confidence to move forward in the situation that you're in now. If you know someone who's been laid off and you think this will be helpful to them, please share it with them. And remember, you are not alone. This season of layoffs are just temporary. Take a breath, 
remind yourself that you will be okay and you will come out the other end of this a better you. So take care of yourself. I'll see you in the next video.